Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending Analog Devices JSD 204B webinar series. My name is Dell Jones, and I'm a staff applications engineer for ADI's High Speed Converter Products. I support the serial interface for ADC, DAC, and transceiver products. All right, here's the schedule for the webinar series. Today we'll discuss the transport layer, and in subsequent weeks we'll discuss the link layer, the physical layer, and associated topics. And finally, we will discuss the service latency and multi-chip synchronization. We won't necessarily cover every detail of the JSD 204B specification during these sessions, but we should cover most of the relevant aspects of the spec while discussing some of the implementation choices we have made in our converter product and how they would be used in the end application. So let's get started. As part of the JSD 204B transport layer discussion today, we'll define the JSD 204B parameters and how to set them in ADI devices. We'll then describe how these parameters affect how the data is mapped from converter samples to serial bits on the link. We will describe what parameters ADI devices support and the different parameter combinations. We will also demonstrate how the JSD 204B parameters and the various clocks are related to each other. We will finish by describing the various test modes that are available to users of ADI devices to assist in the development and debug process. High level block of the JSC 204B transmitter are incorporated on an ADC. The transport layer brings in ADC samples that may or may not have had some digital processing applied to them. This depends on the device and the operating mode. Depending on the sample size and system requirements, the transport layer may need to add bits to form what is called nibble groups. These nibble groups are arranged into frames of octets. The frame data is then sent on to the data link layer. The data, as it passes through the transport and data link layers, is parallel. The width of the parallel data bus depends on the architecture of the framer. In general, as JSD 204 link rates increase, the parallel bus width through the framer increases in order to keep the digital processing clock at a manageable rate. So this is a high-level block diagram of the JSD 204B receiver that's incorporated on our DAX. The function of the transport layer on the receiver is the inverse of the transmitter. The transport layer brings in the decoded framed octets from the data link layer, strips off any bits that were added when the nibble groups were formed, and then extracts the converter samples to be sent onto the DAC or sent on to the DAC. The JSC 204B link configuration parameters determine how the sample data gets packed and unpacked into octets and frames and onto logical JSC 204B lanes. The JSC 204B transmitter communicates the, the values of these parameters to the receiver during JSC 204B link synchronization. This is done as part of the transmitting the initial lane alignment sequence. Even though these parameters are sent across the link to the receiver, the receiver does not use these values to set its own configuration parameters. The receiver link configuration parameters must be set independently using the appropriate SPI registers. The parameters sent over the link are used by the receiver to verify that the transmitter and receiver are configured identically. This is done by comparing the checksums of the parameter values sent over the link to the checksum of the receiver parameter values. If the checksums do not match, an error is reported using an interrupt. Okay. This is a list of the link configuration parameters that affect the way the transport layers, layer packs packs and unpacks the sample data on the JSC 204 link. There are other parameters that are necessary for setting up the link, but they do not affect the data packing. You can find a list of these parameters in section 8.3, table 20 of the JSC 204B specification. 
The CS parameter sets the number of control bits to be transmitted across the link per sample. We will talk about the function of the control bits later on in the presentation. The values for CS can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. Control bits can be appended on the end of each sample or at the end of the frame, depending on the value of the CF parameter. If CF is zero, then the control bits are appended to each sample. If CF equals one, the control bits are put into a control word and placed at the end of the frame. For all ADI devices using JFC204B, CF is always zero. F is the number of octets per lane in a frame cycle. HD is set if a converter sample is split across more than one lane. L is the number of lanes in a link. M is the number of converters. N is the resolution of the converters. N prime is the nibble group size and must be a multiple of four. It includes the converter samples, control bits, and tail bits. This is sometimes referred to as the JSC 204B word size. S is the number of samples per converter per frame, and K is the number of frames in a multi-frame. So, not all combinations of configuration parameters are supported by any particular device. The data sheet for each device will specify which configuration parameter combinations are supported. These are often referred to as JSD 204 modes. The data sheet will list these in tabular format along with the appropriate SPI configuration settings for these modes. Remember, both the JSD 204 transmitter and the JSD 204 receiver must be configured identically. Some JSD 204 link configuration parameters have an interdependency on each other. For our ADCs, we use a system where some parameters are set by the user and dependent parameters are set automatically. Most of our ADCs will have the L, M, F, and N prime set by the user, and then S, H, D, and C, F are set automatically. The N, K, and C, F parameters are set by the user and they have no effect on any other parameters. The AD9250 has a quick configuration register for user's convenience in setting it to one of the four supported JSD 204 modes. The quick config register sets the L, M, F, and HD registers, our parameters. The remaining parameters are set according to recommendations in the data sheet. For ADI DAX, the link configuration parameters are set manually using the JSC4 mode tables in the data sheet. Up to 11 modes are supported. Similar to the ADCs, ADI transceiver products using JSC204B use modes based on the number of converters and the number of lanes. The data sheet describes each of these modes and the associated SPI register settings. L, M, F and HD are determined by the mode, and all other parameters are set manually according to the data sheet recommendation. On the following slide, we'll see exactly how each of these parameters affect the mapping of samples and control information onto the JSD 204 link. Before we show those diagrams, we have some data mapping rules. The JSD 204B specification defines rules for mapping converter samples onto the link. Mapping of converter data occurs according to the following process. All samples are mapped in a linear progressive order starting from converter 0 to converter M minus 1. These samples are mapped into JSD 204 words by adding the appropriate number of control bits as determined by the CS parameter. Remember that in all ADI converter devices, CF is always zero, so control bits are always added to each sample 
and never at the end of the frame as part of a control word. In order to form the appropriate size nibble groups as determined by the end prime parameter, tail bits may need to be appended to the end of the sample and control bits. The following slides contain frame mapping diagrams that show how the configuration parameters affect the mapping process, starting from where ADC samples are input to the transport layer until a full frame of JSD 204 packed data is output to the data link layer. At the top of the diagram, you'll see uh, F times M ADC samples, control and tail bits are added, and then F number of 8-bit octets octets are at the bottom of the diagram, representing the full frame of JC204B data. So at the top of the diagram, you have the ADC samples coming in. At the bottom of the diagram is what the framed uh, octets look like. So let's start with a simple case where we have one JSC204 lane getting one 12-bit ADC sample per frame one sample, and there are 12 bits, and it's all from one, only one converter. Okay. So first we have the single 12-bit sample from one converter. Since CS is set to one, we add a single control bit onto the end of the 12-bit sample. In order to achieve the appropriate nibble group size, which is n prime of 16, we add three tail bits at the end of the word. Since our nibble group size is 16 and we are configured for a single lane, F must be equal to 2 because we have 16 bits, so we have two octets per frame. So two octets in a frame cycle. And those octets get mapped to lane zero. Okay, so that was a pretty simple um, simple case just to kind of get, give you a, uh, an idea of how, how the data flows through the transport layer before it gets to the data link layer. So as we go through these sample examples, we'll take a closer look at some of the key parameters and give examples of how these parameters affect the data mapping. First, we'll take a look at the S parameter. Recall that S is the number of samples per, per converter per frame. In the JSD 204 specification, when S is greater than 1, it is referred to as oversampling. This should not be confused with oversampling in an ADC, although there are similarities. Simply put, oversampling means that for all converters in the link, more than one sample for each is mapped into a frame cycle. The number of samples per converter is set by the S parameter. One thing to note here is the effect of S on the frame clock, which is directly related, directly related to the converter sample clock by the equation Frame clock equals sample clock divided by S. We'll take a closer look at clock relationships in later slides. So this example is identical to the previous one, except now we are setting S to 2. Okay. So now we will transmit two samples per converter on every frame. So we have two samples, each of which need a single control bit. So we have our two samples all from the same converter. We add a control bit, and in order to get our nibble group size to 16, we add three tail bits on the end of each sample. Okay. Since we have doubled the number of samples and therefore the number of bits, we now have four octets to transmit on a single lane in a frame. So F needs to be set to 4. Okay. 
Now we can use the same example to demonstrate how changing the number of lanes affects the data mapping. In this, in this case, we are now changing the number of lanes from one to two. You can see that the process is identical as we add the control bits and the tail bits to each sample. We still have our four act tests, but now, since we are, we have two lanes, F goes back to two because it's still, now it's just two octets per lane. All right, so now you can see kind of the interdependency on F, L, and F. So far in these mapping diagrams, we've been showing uh, every little step of the process. So uh, hopefully you're now familiar enough that we can simplify the diagrams and combine some of these steps. This will be convenient as we illustrate configurations with more lanes. This is an eight-lane example that also includes some variations on the number of samples per converter, nibble group size, converter resolution, control bits, and also uses the HD parameter. Since S equals four, we have four samples from our one converter. So one converter, but we have four samples, okay? These are all, uh, the samples are 16 bits and there are no control bits. Since our nipple group size is also 16, no tail bits are needed. So we have a very efficient use of our bandwidth. Our four 16-bit samples map nicely into eight octets, and each of those octets are mapped to its own lane. Note that each of our four samples is being mapped into two lanes, so therefore HD has to be set to one. HD indicates that a sample is being split across lanes. Okay. So in most devices, the setting of HD will be done automatically based on other configuration parameters. Okay. So here is the same example with the only difference being the converter resolution being 12 bits instead of 16. In this case, four tail bits are, are needed on the end of each sample to form our nibble groups. This configuration uses the same amount of bandwidth as the previous, previous example, but only transmits 48 bits of data rather than, or useful data, instead of 64 bits. All right. So the last two slides demonstrated how it's possible to have an inefficient use of, avail of available bandwidth depending on the combinations of parameters. In some of our newest ADC developments, we offer a special application layer mode that allows for a more efficient way of packing 12-bit samples into eight lanes. In this case, the JSC204 parameters are set the same as the 16-bit sample case, but in reality, we are packing five 12-bit samples and four control bits onto the, onto the same configuration. So now we can transmit 60 bits of data instead of 48, giving us a 20% more efficient use of the bandwidth. So here's what that looks like. The blue section of the diagram shows how the five 12-bit samples, along with four control bits, are put together in the application layer mode and mapped to the input of the transport layer of the JSC-204B transmitter. So all this mapping here, this packing of data is all done in the application layer. And as far as the uh, JSC-204B transmitter is concerned, it's configured just like our 16-bit mode before, which looked like this. So you can see that these are the parameters that would be used when you're setting up the JSC-204B link, but in reality, the data that's getting sent or packed into that formation here is actually done in the application layer. 
Okay. So this is a special case that does not necessarily fall within the bounds of the JSD 204B specification since we are transmitting four control bits, but we have five samples. So uh, part of the JSD 204B specification says that for every sample you need to have, if you're using control bits, then you need one for each sample. So this is outside of the JSD 204B spec. I wanted to show you this example to illustrate how you don't necessarily have to be constrained by the JSD 204B specification, but the application layer can be used in unique ways to meet the needs of the end application. So now let's take a closer look at some of the other JSD 204 parameters, starting with M. Depending on the device, it is possible for the M parameter to have a value that is greater than the number of physical converters in a device. For example, in an ABC that implements digital down converters, the received signal can be demodulated in the digital domain into separate and parallel I and Q data streams. These data streams are input to the transport layer of the JSD-204 transmitter and appear as if they came from separate converters. This is why we may refer to this to these as virtual converters. The following slides will illustrate how the JSC204 transmitter is configured differently in the cases where DDCs are used and not used. So in this example, the demodulation of the received signal is done in the analog domain prior to digitizing. So the I and Q data streams come from two separate converters, two separate physical converters. The JSC-204's M parameter is set to two in this case, which is the same as the number of physical converters in the device. So that's pretty straightforward. In this example, demodulation of the received, sig received signal is done in the digital domain using digital down converters. In this particular device, either ADC can be connected to the two channels of one or more DDCs in any combination required. The DDC will decimate the samples by 4, 8, or 16, reducing the throughput of the, of the amount of samples the JSD 204 b interface needs to transmit. In, the in this configuration that's shown in this diagram, uh, each physical converter is connected to two DDCs and four IQ data pairs are output to the JSD 204 transmitter. So in this case, M will be eight. Okay. Even though there's only two physical converters, the JSD-204B transmitter, or transmitter sees eight parallel data paths coming into it, so M is set to eight. Okay. So while we're talking about the M parameter, I wanted to show a diagram that illustrates the order in which multiple samples from multiple converters are mapped, in this case using four lanes. Notice that all samples from converter zero are mapped before moving on to the sample for converter one. So the mapping goes converter zero, sample zero, then sample one, and then on to converter one, sample zero, and sample one. Also, even though we're not discussing serialization today, I did want to illustrate for you the order in which the bits are put on the link. The MSB is the first bit on the lane. After the LSB would come the control bit for that sample as being used, and then any tail bits that may have been added. Of course, in this example, neither control bits nor tail bits are used. The nibble group size is represented by both 
NP and N apostrophe in the JSC 204 specification. In either case, we call it N prime and they are referring to the same thing. All of ADI devices support N prime equal to 16, most of which support this mode exclusively. There are a couple of devices in development that will also support an N prime of 12 or 8. For, device rate, for devices with bit rates above 6 gigahertz, we use a quad byte architecture so that supporting N prime values other than 16 can create inefficiencies in the design. In any case, we recommend that for your ASIC or FPGA development, an N prime value of 16 should always be supported. The number of frames per multi-frame is bounded according to the equation, to this equation in the JSC 204B specification. The reason for K being less than or equal to 17, 17 octets is because during synchronization, end of multi-frame characters are sent at the end of every multi-frame. We'll talk about lane synchronization next week during our session on the data link layer. Anyway, making the minimum number of octets between each end of multi-frame character 16 ensures that lanes with up to 17 octets of skew can be realigned properly during the lane synchronization process. The table show here will illustrate the K values that our converter devices support. As you can see, the permitted values for K depend on the F parameter. We call it F is the number of octets per lane per frame. Up to three control bits per sample can be transmitted across the JSC 204 link. JSC204B does not specify how control bits can be used, so it is left up to the system designer on what information is to be conveyed with their use. Control bits may be necessary in the end application, so that the logic device can convey information about the particular sample to an ADC. Some examples for this might be to indicate that the sample is overranged or that that sample is the peak hold value. For ADI DAX, control bits are not supported. The primary purpose for control bits is to convey information about the sample. Since the FPGA or ASIC is the brains of the system, it makes sense that it would, might be necessary for uh, the ASIC or FPGA to uh, inform the ADC about the sample, whereas uh, for a DAX sending a sample to an ASIC, uh, there's really no need for uh, the DAC to inform the ASIC uh, anything about that particular data. So that's why we're, they're not being supported currently on our DAC. If the need arises to support control bits on DAC in the future, we can certainly consider adding uh, the support for control bits. Okay. We already mentioned HD and how it is used how it should be set when samples are split across more than one lane. This bit is typically set automatically. All right. This table shows the different parameter values supported by our ADCs with the JSC 204B interface. Again, not all permutations are supported on any device. The data sheet for the device will list all the valid modes supported. As you can see, beyond the AD9250, we have a number of ADCs in development, or number of ADC development projects in the works, many of which are scheduled to release in the next few months. You can contact your local ADI support team for more information on these devices as it becomes available. All right, this table shows the different parameter values supported by our DAX with the JSC 204B interface. 
The data sheet for the device will list all the valid modes supported. Note that we differentiate between what we call single link and dual link modes. Well, because our quad DAC will support both single link and dual link modes. In single link mode, up to four DACs and eight JFD 204B lanes can be used. Conversely, the device can you know, be configured to act as two independent links with up to two DACs and four lanes for each one. In this case, each link will have its own sync output. We will discuss the sync signal in more detail during our link layer discussion next week. Note that whether in a single link mode or dual link mode, only one sysref is required. Sysref is a master timing reference used for determinist latency in a subclass one system. Also note that in dual link mode, both links need to be configured identically since they share the same TLL. The converter sample clock and the JSD-204B system clocks are all interrelated. These relationships need to be understood in order to configure the system correctly. JSD-204B refers to the input reference clock as the device clock. All clocks in the JSD-204 system, including the sample clock, are derived from this clock. Most ADI converters will either use the device clock directly for sampling or divide it down. For the clock calculation examples, FC will be the sample clock, FC is the frame clock, LMFC is the local multi-frame clock, and LR is the JSD 204 line rate. Okay. The frame clock equals the sample clock divided by the number of samples per converter per frame. The local multi-frame clock is the frame clock divided by the number of frames in a multi-frame. Of course, that makes sense. Okay. The line rate can be calculated in terms of the frame clock or the sample clock given by these two equations. The 10 over 8 factor is due to the 8-bit, 8 8-bit, 8 10-bit encoding that is used on the data. Note that increasing the number of converters, that's the M parameter, will increase the line rate, while increasing the number of lanes will decrease the line rate. So let's look at an example. In our example, we have two lanes, two converters, we have two samples per converter, and our nibble group size is 16. So these are the parameters that affect the clock rate. Okay. For example, we're going to use a sample clock of 368.64. Mega samples per second. Okay, so the frame clock is half the sample clock, so it is 184.32 megahertz. LMFC is the frame clock divided by 32, so it is 5.76 megahertz. The line rate is calculated from the sample clock and the M, N, and L parameters, and it's 7.37 gigabits per sample. Per second per second, sorry. Note that if the line rate exceeds the max limit for the device, then more lanes are needed. So if this was a device that was only rated up to six gigabits per second, then this would be an invalid configuration. Okay. So if we're using our generation three uh, JC204B transmitter, it's capable of 12 and a half gigabits per second. So this is a valid uh, parameter combination since it results in 7.37 gigabits per second. Uh, 
However, even though you're, you might be using a 12.5 gigabit capable part, for this, uh, for this combination of parameters and this sample clock, this would be the max sample or max line rate you could achieve. Okay, so now let's take a look at the different test patterns that are available to users for testing and debugging the JSC 204 link. JSC 204B specification recommends many test patterns to use to verify the functionality and performance of the link. For transport layer testing, it defines both a long and short transport layer test. All of our ADCs support both of these tests. In addition, uh, our ADCs support a variety of patterns that can be inserted at various points in the system. PRBS patterns are good for checking the bit error rate of the link, while a RAMP pattern can be good for checking multi-link alignment or latency. So here's a look at our JSC204 transmitter block diagram that shows the location of our test muxes. Okay. So this allows the user to inject a uh, test pattern into the transport layer or into the data link layer or directly into the physical layer or the serializer. Okay. And it all depends on what type of test uh, you want to perform. Of course, for the transport layer test, short and long transport layer is defined by the JSC 204B spec. You'll want to insert that into the transport layer. And then on the other end, you would have to take it out of the transport layer. So we'll show you what that looks like. So our DACs also support many of the same tests and similar checkpoints at the transport, data link, and physical layers. So again, you can check the pattern right on the output of the phi or in the data link layer or at the output of the transport layer. Okay. Bit error rate testing using PRBS patterns can be used to test the phi performance. For testing the transport layer, of course, the short transport layer is supported on our DAC and it would have to be checked here. Again, uh, it's just a matter of exercising some spy bits to enable the test, and on our DAC, we just have a bit that indicates whether the uh, test passes or fails. So there's a variety of tests with the data link layer that are defined in the JSC 204B specification. And we'll discuss those in more detail in next week's seminar. All right. Now, I appreciate you guys attending the session on the transport layer. And I hope it's useful information for you. Uh, as you are looking to incorporate uh, devices with this interface into your designs. Send your questions and comments. Uh, we do value your feedback regarding the content, uh, the presentation, or any other aspect of today's session. Our goal is to make, uh, make these sessions useful for you uh, since you're the user of our product. I hope that it was at least mildly interesting as well. If you have any such feedback, you can give that out to your uh, sales rep or the uh, your FAE or distributor, uh, whatever the case may be. Thanks again. I'll talk to you again next week at the same time as we discuss the data link layer.